The COVID, COVID-19, coronavirus, oh my goodness. Mm, what a reality check. Who's ever thought that when we run a business like this with, you know, how many beds do we have and we look at occupancies on a monthly basis and we say, well, our occupancy was, you know, 60 or if we're lucky, like 73 to 78% and peak season, it's crazy and we don't have enough rooms. But going to like a zero occupancy, oh, we've never, never thought about that. So yeah, then you are faced with a question where you say, well, you know, um, it's this nice term that everybody uses, what is an essential service? And I think Wayne also spoke about that as um, an essential service and, and that should keep running. You know, and then in your own business, you look back and you think, okay, so what are essential services? Where do we need to spend money? Um, you know, you obviously look at what you have available and you kind of stretch it and you think, how many months is this going to keep us alive? And how long can we go without making life-changing decisions for staff and for business and for all those kind of things? So, um, yes, covid sure knocked you know our feet from under us and um and we are in positions and i, I and and i don't i mean obviously we are not the only ones i think tourism in the world and um and here in namibia um it's been it's taken a big a big knock and um lots of people after this will you know sit without jobs and um income and you know, go back to communal areas, which again creates a lot of pressure in those areas. And especially if there's no money in those areas, is what do people live off? Um, how do they sustain themselves and just stay alive? You know, so I know that in in other episodes, um, you know, people have spoken about the impact of you know where people find food or income. So whether that you know brings up levels of, of of poaching again and survival, whether that's just for meat, just to be able to feed yourself or um, feed your family, or sell the meat to be able to buy something for yourself or your family, and keep everybody alive. So, yeah, the impact is is nasty. is is not a good one, and therefore our focus is now is local. And local, we call it local is lacquer in Afrikaans. And um, it, you know, it gives it a nice ring. So local is good and nice. And um, we've, we've, we're running a, a special, and, and it's not just us, many of the partners in tourism, other lodges at guest houses and reserves run specials for, for local tourism. And um, we see there's a take on this. And, um, they are some visitors, and we we're grateful. I mean, wow, um, you know, and 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 the local tourist that travels, and you chat to him, and and they are interested. They they want to know how you are doing, and and you know how are you surviving this, and you've taken such a big knock. So there's you know sympathy, and 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 it's it's an it's a nice feel. So shout out for local tourism. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool to have you guys here. I hope you had a great day today. Yeah, we had an amazing day. Yeah? Com came pre pretty close to the leopard. It was a bit scary. That's more than close. Yeah. Is, it? <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you're drinking some wine? <laughs> so who, who did you guys see? Uh, we have seen Mao Enzi. Yeah, because I told them this guy, I followed him today in the morning. Okay. And actually today he was uh, behaving quite funny according to the signal. Every time I got closer, he moved. So I suspected he must have been with an uncolored female. Okay. So I decided, let, let's go back there and check and find out what is happening. Yeah, we, we were lucky because we found him. He approached us actually. And we had the first view where he walked past us, and then um, we tried to catch up with him. Uh, we found him, and he, he decided to lay down there. 
um, we had some time with him. Uh, eventually, he walked up. But it's amazing, he's still away, but Namibians uh, got up and uh, started traveling locally. Exactly, uh, local is lacking. And uh, I just hope that after COVID, that uh, there will still be some Namibian specials uh, to keep us traveling, because that is what we need. We need to actually show our own people. It's true. Everybody's here. Yeah. And uh, it's true. Place, place like Okonjima, it's uh, one of the few in the world, perhaps the only in the world, where you can do what we did today. And that is so nice. You know? We came here to see Leopard and uh, we saw them. And uh, we had a Thank you. magnificent <laughs> experience doing that. Oh, that's so awesome. I grew up in, in Tasha. My dad was with Nature Conservation, so I lived in Okokuyu as a kid. And now to get there, and you are only say 20 or 30 Namibian families there yes. without the mad rush of, mm. Mm. of, of, of uh, foreigners who I think yes. that. it's actually also a blessing yes although I know they're not making any money there they just also like you yes. guys surviving just giving specials at 600 rand a weekend or yeah. whatever but at least you you we can get to see that in different circumstances yeah. mm. we can actually drive along those gravel roads and not being blown away by all the dust and just look at the animals and see them for what they are. So that's, that's quite So this is our big question now is, um, you know, are we, when, when things return to some sort of, you know, it's difficult to call it normal, but to some sort of new normal, new normal, normal new you know, normal. yeah. Um, will we do things differently? Will we, will we remember the things that we didn't like and we thought was an issue, but we didn't deal with it because Either it brought us money or it kept our people employed or whatever. Uh, but now we see things like you say, I don't want to drive somewhere and drive just in dust, in dust, in dust, because there's a hundred cars on that road. Do we need to respect that area a bit more? Do we need to think about, you know, our impact, our footprint, those kind of things, you know? We've now worked out that over the last four weekends, um, you know, with the money that's come in, we are able to pay the electricity bill. And we are able to um, fill up a underground diesel tank because most of our vehicles run on diesel. And obviously, also that is very rationed, I may add. Uh, we get allocated X amount of kilometers that we're allowed to drive. And um, so, yes, those are, are the things. But Local tourism obviously sees the opportunity to, to, to visit places that they don't often go to and don't often uh, visit. And um, yeah, it's great. It's great to be able to speak to local people because all of this matters to, to Namibians as well, not just to foreigners. And um, when we have our education programs, it's Namibian kids. Yes, there are some foreign schools visiting as well, but it's Namibian kids. And we want to you know, infuse the local um, next generation with love and passion for, for nature and for conservation and for what we're doing. In current times, I must say, it's, it's, it's to see good work coming to an end because there's no money for it. And um, good work, so that starting off with good work of you know, staff members um, that have been here for years and, you know, just know their routine and their jobs so well to make decisions about people's lives. That is very painful. And then, of course, seeing, you know, projects coming to on halt because they are not seen as essential services. And um, so whether we keep a pangolin project going, it doesn't impact directly right now on anybody positively um, right now. So therefore, it's not an essential service. And therefore, if we have to save those costs, have to drive out less because fuel is rationed, have to you know, minimize the amount of staff and even researchers or um, you know, assistant researchers and, and those kind of things. Those are all painful situations. I mean, I think we all can survive and we'll all have a little bit of something in our stomachs and we all still breathe beautiful Namibian air. Um, but it is, it's heavy here. You know, you've got good days and you've got bad days. 
uh, with COVID. But um, the good days is if you do go out there into the felt and, and it's crazy. I, I mean, I get up relatively early in the morning before the sun actually pops over our mountain range. And um, I just stand outside on the stoop and look out and how blessed and how lucky am I to live here. But look out into nature and I just hear these birds wake up and um, it's as if nature just knows nothing about this. It just goes on about its daily life. And, uh, and that to me, you know, inspires me again.